Wilhelm Dilthey, German, Velm Dilthey, the 19th of November 1833 to the 1st of October 1911, was a German historian, psychologist, sociologist, and hermeneutic philosopher who held GWF Hegel's chair in philosophy at the University of Berlin. As a polymathic philosopher, working in a modern research university, Dilthey's research interests revolved around questions of scientific methodology, historical evidence and history's status as a science. He could be considered an empiricist, in contrast to the idealism prevalent in Germany at the time, but his account of what constitutes the empirical and experiential differs from British empiricism and positivism in its central epistemological and ontological assumptions, which are drawn from German literary and philosophical traditions. Life Dilthey was born in 1833 as the son of a reformed pastor in the village of Biebrich in the Duchy of Nassau, now in Hesse, Germany. As a young man he followed family traditions by studying theology at Heidelberg University, where his teachers included the young Kuno Fischer. He then moved to the University of Berlin and was taught by, amongst others, Friedrich Adolf Trendelenburg and August Boek, both former pupils of Friedrich Schleiermacher. In January 1864, he received his doctorate from Berlin with a thesis in Latin on the Schleiermacher's ethics, and in June of the same year he also earned his habilitation with a thesis on moral consciousness. He became a private dozen at Berlin in 1865. In 1859, he edited Schleiermacher's letters and soon after he was also commissioned to write a biography—the first volume of which was eventually published in 1870. In 1867 he took up a professorship at the University of Basel, but later—in 1882—he returned to Berlin where he held the prestigious chair in philosophy at the university. In 1874, he married Catherine Putman, and the couple had one son and two daughters. He died in 1911. Topic. Work Topic. Hermeneutics Dilthey took some of his inspiration from the works of Friedrich Schleiermacher on hermeneutics, which he helped revive. Both figures are linked to German Romanticism. Schleiermacher was strongly influenced by German Romanticism which led him to place more emphasis on human emotion and the imagination. Dilthey, in his turn, as the author of a vast monograph on Schleiermacher, responds to the questions raised by Droysen and Rank about the philosophical legitimation of the human sciences. He argues that scientific explanation of nature or Claren must be completed with a theory of how the world is given to human beings through symbolically mediated practices. To provide such a theory is the aim of the philosophy of the humanities, a field of study to which Dilthey dedicated his entire academic career. The school of romantic hermeneutics stressed that historically embedded interpreters, a living, rather than a Cartesian dualism or theoretical subject, Use understanding and interpretation Verstehen, which combine individual psychological and social historical description and analysis, to gain a greater knowledge of texts and authors in their contexts. However, Dilthey remains distinct from other German Romantics and life philosophers through his emphasis on historicality. Dilthey understood man as a historical being. However, history is not described in terms of an object of the past, but a series of world views. Man cannot understand himself through reflection or introspection, but only through what history can tell him, never in objective concepts but always only in the living experience which springs up out of the depths of his own being. Dilthey wants to emphasize the intrinsic temporality of all understanding, that man's understanding is dependent on past worldviews, interpretations, and a shared world. The process of interpretive inquiry established by Schleiermacher involved what Dilthey called the hermeneutic circle the recurring movement between the implicit and the explicit, the particular and the whole. Schleiermacher saw the approaches to interpreting sacred scriptures for example, the Pauline epistles and classical texts e Plato's philosophy as more specific forms of what he proposed as general hermeneutics, algemeine hermeneutic. Schleiermacher approached hermeneutics as the art of understanding and recognized both the importance of language and the thoughts of an author to interpreting a text. Dilthey saw understanding as the key for the human sciences in contrast with the natural sciences. The natural sciences observe and explain nature, but the humanities understand human expressions of life. 
so long as a science is accessible to us through a procedure based on the systematic relation between life, expression, and understanding. Dilthey considered it a part of the human sciences, along with Friedrich Nietzsche, Georg Simmel, and Henri Bergson. Dilthey's work influenced early 20th century Lebensphilosophy and existence philosophy. Dilthey's students included Bernhard Grotheisen, Hans Lips, Hermann Knoll, Theodor Litt, Eduard Spranger, Georg Misch, and Eric Rothacker. Dilthey's philosophy also influenced the religious philosopher Martin Buber. Dilthey's works informed the early Martin Heidegger's approach to hermeneutics in his early lecture courses, in which he developed a hermeneutics of factical life and in Being and Time. 1927. But Heidegger grew increasingly critical of Dilthey, arguing for a more radical temporalization of the possibilities of interpretation and human existence. In Wahrheit und Method, Truth and Method, 1960, Hans Georg Gadamer, influenced by Heidegger, criticized Dilthey's approach to hermeneutics as both overly aesthetic and subjective as well as method oriented and positivistic. According to Gadamer, Dilthey's hermeneutics is insufficiently concerned with the ontological event of truth and inadequately considers the implications of how the interpreter and the interpreter's interpretations are not outside of tradition but occupy a particular position within it, i.e., have a temporal horizon. Topic. Psychology Dilthey was interested in psychology. In his work Ideas Concerning a Descriptive and Analytic Psychology Ideen über eine Beschreibend und Zergliedern Psychologie, 1894, he introduced a distinction between explanatory psychology or Clarin psychology, also explanative psychology and descriptive psychology Beschreibend psychology, also analytic psychology, Zergliedern psychology. In his terminology, explanatory psychology is the study of psychological phenomena from a third-person point of view, which involves their subordination to a system of causality, while descriptive psychology is a discipline that attempts to explicate how different mental processes converge in the structural nexus of consciousness. The distinction is based on the more general distinction between explanatory, explanative sciences or Clarend Wissenschaften, on the one hand, and descriptive, interpretive sciences Beschreibend Wissenschaften or Verstehend Wissenschaften, that is, the sciences which are based on the Verstehend method, on the other. See below. In his later work Der Aufbau der Geschichtlichen Welt in den Geisteswissenschaften, 1910, he used the alternative term structural psychology for descriptive psychology. Topic. Sociology Dilthey was also interested in what some would call sociology in the 21st century, although he strongly objected to being labeled as such, as the sociology of his time was mainly that of Auguste Comte and Herbert Spencer. He objected to their dialectical, evolutionist assumptions about the necessary changes that all societal formations must go through, as well as their narrowly natural scientific methodology. Comte's idea of positivism was, according to Dilthey, one-sided and misleading. Dilthey did, however, have good things to say about the neo-Kantian sociology of Georg Simmel, with whom he was a colleague at the University of Berlin. Simmel himself was later an associate of Max Weber, the primary founder of sociological antipositivism. J. I. Hans Bacher has argued that Dilthey should be considered one of the classical sociological theorists due to his own influence in the foundation of nonpositivist Verstehen sociology and the Verstehen method. Topic. Distinction between natural sciences and human sciences A lifelong concern was to establish a proper theoretical and methodological foundation for the human sciences, e.g. history, law, literary criticism, distinct from, but equally, scientific, as, the natural sciences, e.g. physics, chemistry. He suggested that all human experience divides naturally into two parts, that of the surrounding natural world, in which objective necessity rules, and that of inner experience, characterized by sovereignty of the will, responsibility for actions, a capacity to subject everything to thinking and to resist everything within the fortress of freedom of his, her own person. Dilthey strongly rejected using a model formed exclusively from the natural sciences and instead proposed developing a separate model for the human sciences 
His argument centered around the idea that in the natural sciences we seek to explain phenomena in terms of cause and effect, or the general and the particular, in contrast, in the human sciences, we seek to understand in terms of the relations of the part and the whole. In the social sciences we may also combine the two approaches, a point stressed by German sociologist Max Weber. His principles, a general theory of understanding or comprehension could, he asserted, be applied to all manner of interpretation ranging from ancient texts to artwork, religious works, and even law. His interpretation of different theories of aesthetics in the 17th, 18th, and 19th centuries was preliminary to his speculations concerning the form aesthetic theory would take in the 20th century. Both the natural and human sciences originate in the context or nexus of life. Lebenszusammenhang, a concept which influenced the phenomenological account of the lifeworld Lebenswelt, but are differentiated in how they relate to their life context. Whereas the natural sciences abstract away from it, it becomes the primary object of inquiry in the human sciences. Dilthey defended his use of the term Geisteswissenschaft literally, science of the mind, or spiritual knowledge, by pointing out that other terms such as social science and cultural sciences are equally one-sided and that the human mind or spirit is the central phenomenon from which all others are derived and analyzable. For Dilthey, like Hegel, Geist, mind, or spirit, has a cultural rather than a social meaning. It is not an abstract intellectual principle or disembodied behavioral experience but refers to the individual's life in its concrete cultural historical context. Topic. Weltanschauungen In 1911, Dilthey developed a typology of the three basic Weltanschauungen, or world views, which he considered to be typical, comparable to Max Weber's notion of ideal types, and conflicting ways of conceiving of humanity's relation to nature. In naturalism, represented by Epicureans of all times and places, humans see themselves as determined by nature. In the idealism of freedom or subjective idealism, represented by Friedrich Schiller and Immanuel Kant, humans are conscious of their separation from nature by their free will. In objective idealism, represented by G. W. F. Hegel, Baruch Spinoza, and Giordano Bruno, humans are conscious of their harmony with nature. This approach influenced Karl Jasper's psychology of worldviews as well as Rudolf Steiner's philosophy of freedom. Topic. Comparison with the Neo-Kantians Dilthey's ideas should be examined in terms of his similarities and differences with Wilhelm Windelband and Heinrich Rickert, members of the Baden school of Neo-Kantianism. Dilthey was not a Neo-Kantian, but had a profound knowledge of Immanuel Kant's philosophy, which deeply influenced his thinking. But whereas Neo-Kantianism was primarily interested in epistemology on the basis of Kant's critique of pure reason, Dilthey took Kant's critique of judgment as his point of departure. An important debate between Dilthey and the Neo-Kantians concerned the human as opposed to cultural sciences, with the Neo-Kantians arguing for the exclusion of psychology from the cultural sciences and Dilthey for its inclusion as a human science. Topic. Editorial work In 1859, Dilthey was asked to complete the editing of Schleiermacher's letters. Dilthey also inaugurated the Academy edition the Akademie Ausgabe abbreviated as double A or AC of Kant's writings Gesemelt Schriften, Königlich Proische Akademie der Wissenschaften, Berlin, 1902-38 in 1895, and served as its first editor. Bibliography The Essence of Philosophy 1907, originally published in German as Das Wesen der Philosophie Wilhelm Dilthey, selected works are being published by Princeton University Press under the editorship of the noted Dilthey scholars Rudolf A. Macriel and Frithjof Rodi. Published volumes include, Volume 1, Introduction to the Human Sciences Volume 2, Understanding the Human World, Selected Works of Wilhelm Dilthey 2010, Volume 3, The Formation of the Historical World in the Human Sciences Volume 4, Hermeneutics and the Study of History Volume 5, Poetry and Experience Wilhelm Dilthey, Gesemelt Schriften are currently published by Vandenhoek and Ruprecht, Volume 1, Einleitung in die Geisteswissenschaften Volume 2, Weltanschauung und Analyse des Menschen seat Renaissance 
Renaissance und Reformation Vol. 3, Studien zur Geschichte des Deutschen Geistes Vol. 4, Die Jugendgeschichte Hegels und Andir Abhandlungen zur Geschichte des Deutschen Idealismus Vol. 5, Die Geistige Welt Vol. 6, Die Geistige Welt Vol. 7, Der Aufbau der Geschichtlichen Welt in den Geisteswissenschaften Vol. 8, Weltanschauungsler Vol. 9, Pädagogik Vol. 10, System der Ethik Vol. 11, Vom Aufgang des Geschichtlichen Bewitzens Vol. 12, Zur Proischen Geschichte Vol. 13, Leben Schleiermachers. Erster Band Vol. 14, Leben Schleiermachers. Zweiter Band Vol. 15, Zur Geistesgeschichte Day 19. Jarunderts Vol. 16, Zur Geistesgeschichte Day 19. Jarunderts Vol. 17, Zur Geistesgeschichte Day 19. Jarunderts Vol. 18, Die Wissenschaften vom Menschen, der Gesellschaft und der Geschichte Vol. 19, Grundelgung der Wissenschaften vom Menschen, der Gesellschaft und der Geschichte Vol. 20, Logik und System der Philosophischen Wissenschaften Vol. 21, Psychologie als Erfahrungswissenschaft Vol. 22, Psychologie als Erfahrungswissenschaft Vol. 23, Allgemeine Geschichte der Philosophie Vol. 24, Logik und Wort Vol. 25, Dichter als Seher der Menschheit Vol. 26, Das Erlebnis und die Dichting Topic See also Analytic Psychology Stout Descriptive Psychology Brentano Carl Dilthey, younger brother of Wilhelm Dilthey Positivismusstreit Topic Notes Topic Further reading Hodges, M. A., William Dilthey Routledge, 2013. Lessing, Hans Ulrich, Rudolf A. Macriel and Ricardo Pozo, eds. Recent Contributions to Dilthey's Philosophy of the Human Sciences Stuttgart, Frohman Holzburg, 2011. Macriel, Rudolf A., Dilthey, Philosopher of the Human Studies Princeton, Princeton University Press, 1993, Demol, Yosh, The Tragedy of Finitude, Dilthey's Hermeneutics of Life New Haven, Yale University Press, 2004. Topic external links Dilthey Forschungsstelle in der Ruhr Universität Bochum Macriel, Rudolf, Wilhelm Dilthey, The Stanford Encyclopedia of Philosophy Spring 2011 edition, Edward N. Zalta ed.